In hard partition clustering, one considers situations like this, where the points are assigned uniquely to one cluster. So in contrast to this situation where there might be some points that are 50-50 assigned. One way to represent such a situation is with center points. So one center point here, one center point here, and one here. And then the Voronoi tessellation, as we know from vector quantization, would give the boundaries at which the points are assigned to one or the other cluster. And a simple and frequently used algorithm for hard partition clustering then is identical to the algorithm that we have learned in vector quantization, namely the LBG or generalized Lloyd algorithm where you place center points and use the von Neuter solution to delineate the clusters. The error function is the same, all the considerations are the same, it's just that you apply the algorithm to cluster data rather than homogeneously distributed data. There are of course also the same problems. Um, that you don't reach necessarily a global optimum. And one way to deal with that is to run the algorithm several times with different initial conditions and then pick the best result. And also problem in general with clustering algorithms is that often you need to determine the number of clusters in advance or you have to decide somehow or you run the same algorithm with different numbers of clusters and then uh, pick the version that gives best results. Now, to illustrate this, I want to go to the simulation here. Uh, maybe first I go to... Um, so this is a simulation written by Hartmut Loos and Bernd Fritzke. That's an older version. There's a newer version available. But what I want to show here is maybe best shown with this older version, 1.5. So if you have such a data distribution and you just want to want, want to do vector quantization, uh, you initialize the reference vectors to some data points and then you start the algorithm and by iteratively moving the reference vectors to the center of gravity of the assigned points and then assign the points to the nearest reference vector that position themselves in a reasonable way. So this is with five reference vectors. We can also do a simulation, let's say, with, with ten reference vectors. And we see that it always reaches sort of a um, homogeneous distribution of reference vectors. Now, exactly the same algorithm used on a different data set. No, that's not what I wanted. Discrete. So on different clusters. And let's also start with 5 reference vectors initialized. Then we run the algorithm. And this would be a result with 5 reference vectors. And the problem here is that obviously 5 is too few reference vectors. So this reference vector represents two clusters and also this reference reference vector represents two clusters, but these three are nicely centered in corresponding clusters. So if you take, for instance, 10 so that result is better in the sense that no reference vector now represents two clusters, but we have situations like here where we have two reference vectors in one cluster and here we have three reference vectors in one cluster. It's a bit questionable whether that would be two clusters or not, but that's that looks fine. So in principle it works, but there's a question of how many reference vectors one should take.
So the Davis Bolden index can help you decide that. And uh, it's defined as follows. So first we define a cluster dispersion. So here this is the cluster center. And these are the points that belong to the cluster. So C of K is a set of data points that belong to one cluster. So we look at the mean squared distance of the points from the center vector. This is a normalization by the number of reference vector of data points for that cluster. And then we take the square root. So this is something like yeah, a standard deviation, a generalized sort of multidimensional standard deviation. If you have the dispersion, we can look at the cluster similarity index here. And that's defined as the sum of the standard deviations or the dispersions divided by the difference of the center vectors. No, let me... draw this so let me let me draw the circle uh, the clusters just with circles so let's assume we have a cluster here and we have a smaller cluster here then the dispersion is sort of the standard deviation right so it could be shown here as the radius So that's, and the sum of this so these are the dispersions, and this distance here would be this thing, and now it's quite obvious that two clusters are separated nicely if the sum of the ready so if the sum of the dispersions or the sum of the standard deviations so the sum of this blue line and this blue line is small compared to the green line yeah now if blue is small and green is large this is a small value and therefore the clusters have little similarity no. Now, one means the two clusters touch each other, basically. A value larger than one means there's an overlap between the clusters, and uh, a value smaller than one indicates nice separation of the clusters. So now this is a measure for how well two clusters are, sem uh, are separated, and we want small values, obviously. Now, the davis bolden index is a sum over the cluster similarities, and we always take the maximum. So we look for each cluster, what, what is the, which one is the nearest one, and then we take that most unfavorable neighbor, sort of, which is least separated from the, from the cluster. So if we take, if you have a couple of clusters this for instance we would go through each of these right so the sum would run over four clusters and for each cluster we would let's say we start with this one and then we calculate the cluster similarity of this cluster with this cluster, this cluster, this cluster, that gives us three values here. And we take the nearest one, so in this case the cluster similarity probably with this cluster would be, would have the largest value, so that enters the sum. Then we take this one, and it's this cluster that is most close also relative to the, to the radius, so we would take this cluster similarity, then we would go for this, and then it's a bit unclear whether this or 
maybe this cluster is nearer because I mean this is well it's clear that this cluster is nearer but it's not only the distance that matters it's also the standard deviation of the clusters that matters so I'm not sure either this or this would give the largest cluster similarity and then we take this one and then it's definitely this one that takes the largest cluster similarity so if I so we would take so how can I visualize this well this one here would take this one this one would take this one this one also definitely would take this one and this one most likely would take this one All right so these are the four um SKL values, the four cluster similarity values that would enter the sum. Now it's quite obvious that overall you want you get a small value um, if the clusters are well separated. Now what you can do is oops. You can run the algorithm with different numbers of clusters, or rather cluster vectors, and make a plot like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven clusters. So this would be the Davis-Bolden index. <clears throat> this is a number of clusters. And then you might find something like here's a point, here's a point, here's a point. Here's a point. Uh, something like this. And now a small Davis Bolden index indicates good clustering. So this could be a situation where you either have four clusters or you have seven clusters, right? So this would be four and seven. 